Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to some more Mr. Robot Season 3, Episode 3. First things first, apologies for the lack of video last week, it was just a manic week, there was not enough time in the days apparently to get this all done, so apologies that we missed a video last week, and if you're watching this in the future where this isn't relevant at all, um, I guess this is fine, you didn't miss anything, you didn't get to miss, you just got to keep watching through the entire thing at your own leisurely pace, so good. Good job, you future viewer. Keep being great. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, apparently you have to earn money to survive in this world, I guess. And that had to take precedence over making videos and stuff. So that's that's how that works. <laughs> Last time on Mr. Robot, if I'm remembering correctly, we ended on a bit of a cliffhanger ending. Elliot had uh, tracked down the people, well, the FBI, Dom and co, who had hacked his computer. And he did the Uno reverse, and now he's right there with them. I was sounding very weird there because I was running out of breath. <laughs> we ended on a, are they going to meet? Are they going to finally see each other? I'm half expecting this episode to probably have nothing to do with that and just go and do its own thing for an episode because that's normally the pattern. We have a cliffhanger ending, and then we don't actually resolve that cliffhanger ending to the, the next episode, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm excited for those two, Elliot and Dom, to finally meet. Joanne dead but ahead it seems like i don't think it's fake <laughs> i like i'm just very paranoid about everything and seeing is believing but i'm fairly certain dead baby has gone to social services uh i'm not sure i think her bodyguard survived i think he was in recovery so maybe he'll come back around somehow uh and uh the bartender dude uh, also dead i believe so that happened elliot also back in therapy again in a new place a very hannibal lecter-esque therapy session mr robot took over the body and that was a cool scene oh yeah and most importantly he's got dog he's got the doggo back uh i assume that will be relevant but everyone protect the doggo that's the most important thing nothing happens to that dog and we can all be happy right <laughs> but yeah i'm super excited to jump back in see where we go next but before we watch this episode please remember to hit the thumbs up if you enjoy the reaction and the review of the episode that happens afterwards also if you enjoy this remember to subscribe and then you won't miss any future videos and it's the best way to let me know you like this stuff and you want to see more of it and if you want even more of this face i've got twitch i've got tiktok i've got a discord it's all linked down there i might be live who knows go click on the things hang out there we'd love to see you there but for now let's jump into this see what happens next on Mr. Robot? It's happening. Oh, we flash back. We're back to the moment. Oh shit, we're filling in some gaps, boys. Are we getting popcorn gun? Is he gonna get it? Well, we we know how this goes. We, we should talk about this. No! Did the popcorn just save his life? What the fuck? What the hell? <laughs> oh my god. Did he get jammed? <laughs> oh god. He's going full Joker. He's going full Joker. I'm immortal. He's, he's like... Divine God. intervention. <laughs> we... Are gods. Yep, he's back here. Really he really is. He really is crazy. This was an act of God, and we have been invited into his circle to lead this revolution. You haven't been invited anywhere. You forced yourself. Once they realize they can't recover the data, they'll figure out a way to recreate it. Okay. This is, this is how he muscles in, I guess. Crazy, crazy cult god man. <laughs> You're a psychopath. How do I even trust you? Pull the trigger again. I'll accept whatever fate decides. When the person with dual personalities is more sane than the other guy. God After fucking tonight, damn it. I could use your help. I don't love you. Some things are better left unsaid. <laughs> okay. You know, fair enough. You might just be the perfect kind of crazy who can protect me from me. Yep, there it is. I can manipulate this crazy to work for me. <laughs> Madness. Yeah, like I say, that's all stuff we kind of knew, but it's fun getting to see it play out as it as it did. Let me monologue a little first and uh, hold off on showing the guns. I guess we have to be shown how they meet as well. 
they all met at the same night, apparently. <laughs> I'm going to assume by your funny accent that you're Tyrell Willick. You didn't let him monologue, goddammit. James, E Corp IT, I believe. After he completed your honeypot request, he contacted a uh, Gideon Godard. <laughs> Gideon Godard. You're going to be the most wanted man in the world. And now I am your only shot at staying out of jail. You should go. Yeah, you don't have any choice. You have no options. Oh, whoa, hello. <laughs> hello, USA Network. <laughs> we're doing a Shining-esque opening here. <laughs> Is that what we're doing? <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Is this going to be a fucking Tyrell episode? We're going to see what he was getting up to. Is that what we're doing today? I'm in. We kind of know where this is going already, but let's see it. Man, this really, it's just, just flashback the episode. Jeez. This episode's really just like putting full stops behind everything. Like, yes, the Dark Army got him out of prison early. Yes, Tyrell was tucked away out of sight where he couldn't be found. Like, so, so far, this episode's just like everything that's happened so far. Yes, that is what happened. Oh, look, it's Trump. Oh, good. You're going back to New York in 22 minutes. Well, Jesus Christ, you could have called me instead of putting me on a four-hour flight. I need you to start an image rehabilitation on Tyrell Wellick. That is a tall order. <laughs> well, this is that guy who does all the fucking, like, news programs, right? Makes sense, though, you know, media being controlled by powerful people. I may have a potential candidate for president I want you to back. Look, the country's desperate right now, but you can't be serious. <laughs> I mean, the guy's a buffoon. He's completely divorced from oh reality. Oh my god. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> they went there. God damn it. God damn it, show. I can just see that the whole sort of Trump situation happening in real time as they were writing the show and like, Okay, we've got to do something with this. We have to. It, ha it has to go in here somewhere. Hi, Mr. Williams. Please, come, come, have a seat. Oh, wait, this is this is the fucking guy from Princess Bride, is it not? I was uh, sent here to confirm your loyalty to our cause. Of course I will be loyal to you. You're our partner. Did you kill Sharon Knowles? What? What does this have to do with... Did you kill Sharon Knowles? No. Do you love your wife? What is this? Do you love your wife? The test. It's a you fucking test, dude. Else. Do you hate your father? No. Will you be loyal to me? Yes. Did you murder Sharon Knowles? This is enough. This is like a fucking Blade Runner test. Jesus, like... Don't look away. Look at me. Fucking baseline test from 2049. Jeez. Although well, this came first, I guess. Have you slept with anyone else since you've been married? Yes. There you go. Broke him. Did you murder Sharon Knowles? <laughs> yes. <laughs> will you be loyal to me? No, I will not. <laughs> will not. That was so fucking trippy and intense. God damn. <laughs> what perfect, perfect actor to do to do that scene. It's just so off-putting <laughs> for some reason. Always be loyal to Elliot. To be fair, he has been kind of obsessed with Elliot since first meeting him. We'll get you everything you need. We're naming this op Red Wheelbarrow. Of course we are. Of course that's what it's being was, named. Uh, Mr. Alderson's request. <laughs> you, still you have a collect call from an inmate at Queensboro Correctional Facility. Oh cool, we're seeing his part of the phone this call. This call will be recorded and monitored. Is it really you? Who is it? Bonsoir. Elliot. <laughs> it's so weird seeing it from his point of view. Like, he's doing it, like, 
I'm being cute. Look, that's how we talk to each other. Yet when you saw it from Elliot's point of view, it was like menacing. <laughs> In a firm stance, solid grip. Sweet through the lock. Or we'll work out some frustration. <laughs> Fucking, he's gonna kill someone with that axe, I swear to God. <laughs> he's gonna fucking murder someone. Who gave this man an axe? No, oh, baby cam. He's gonna go crazy about this baby situation, like... For sure, right? He's gonna go chasing that baby. With that axe. Not to hit the baby with the axe, but... Whoever has the baby, maybe. Oh, what a cut. What a fucking cut. Well done, show. Well done. <laughs> We're in the eye of a shitstorm and it ain't slowing down right now. But it will. Maybe then we can discuss Budapest. Man, fucking mustache man is getting around everywhere today. If anything gets fucked up, she's protected. You're not. Stop caring about her. Trust me. Yeah, that doesn't work out. Bye. Poor Cisco. <laughs> Poor Cisco. This is so weird because we know the results of everything we're seeing in this episode. <laughs> like that scene might have worked as like a foreboding moment this had it been in a previous episode, but I don't know. Talk about it later. <laughs> Elliot and I should be working on this together if we were in the same room this would have been. Are you finished? Oh my god, again with the cut! Jesus, so they're going ham today! It's cool though, it's cool seeing um, Tyrell like broken down like this. I'm telling you, he's gonna fucking murder someone. <laughs> There's no way he's not. He's getting obsessed with this act now. <laughs> no one who's been emasculated by crushing or cutting may enter the assembly of the Lord. Deuteronomy 23 1. Uh huh. <laughs> it's face. I don't think Tyrell could lose it more than he already lost it. But apparently. Apparently. He really is. He is fucking Jack Nicholson <laughs> in this shining comparison. <laughs> Just becoming obsessed. Yeah, like he's the most wanted person in the world right now. He has to play it cool. But he has kind of made himself a disheveled disguise. <laughs> no one will recognize me with my beard and glasses and hat. Maybe they've been tipped off to keep an eye out for him if he was to leave. Or he just thinks he's, like, lost. I don't know. I don't know what triggered that. Or he recognized him, I guess. Maybe he recognized him. I don't know. Freeze, don't move! Let me see your hands! Okay, he recognized him. He just straight up recognized him. That's Tyrell over there. <laughs> I can't believe it's actually you. I just had a hunch. English? That's one hell of a hunch. One I hell of a hunch. He's actually trying to break, break his thumb. He's away. actually trying to break his thumb. Oh my god. He's like, I saw that in a movie once. <laughs> oh my god. I don't. I can't. I can't. Don't break your thumb. Don't do it. Please, God, don't do this. Don't do this. Oh, oh no. No. I bet the Dark Army are going to come fucking get him. Like, he's going to break his thumb for no reason. Finally. This cop's about to get deaded. I was thinking you guys were going to send the cavalry. Yep, fucking knew it. I fucking called it. Fucking Tyrell. What? <laughs> oh my god, is this dude? He's fucking. I fucking called this as well. I am getting some serious heat at work, which in my world eventually leads to suspicion. Fucking knew this guy was dodgy. I fucking knew it. But we're both married to our jobs. That said, 
My boys were everything to me. And when my wife left me, she took them. I was able to prove to my wife that I was a good provider. Now, tonight, when I get home, my kids are gonna run up and hug me. When all is said and done here, you'll have your chance to fix your situation. And then your wife and son will come running up to greet you at the end of a long day's work. Mm, about that. About that. We have to get this mission back on track. And that can't happen until Elliot and I are reunited. Just wants his boo Elliot, man. He just wants his boo. <laughs> That's what this is about. I didn't expect to have our friendly mustache man have a little heart to heart. He's been so enigmatic up to this point. But then again, he could just be lying in order to get to Tyrell. Who knows? Take my dermis, for example. Yeah, so what? You don't even have kids. Yep, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Confirmed. <laughs> the moment after I say it. God damn it. Go get packed. He's being released. Oh, good. He's put down the axe. He put down the axe. He's so happy. <laughs> he was so happy. Yay! Baby Boo Elliot is free. It's perfect. He will love it. He loves them run down his secret bases. This is such a weird episode. It's like, it's like watching a prequel. This whole episode. <laughs> it's like watching The Phantom Menace after watching all the other movies, which I guess is kind of how that worked out anyway. Ignore me. <laughs> what about my suit? Tyrell, we discussed I need it. It's non-negotiable. I have to look my best for him. <laughs> I knew he was going to say it. It's in your closet. I need to look good for my boy. I look fancy. <laughs> the suit has now become like his... his villain costume. <laughs> you know what I mean? He just has the one. He never changes. Always that one suit. <laughs> Chambers and church. This makes his interaction so much more interesting. Just like, just like he's so excited to meet him, and Elliot just freaks out. <laughs> and then we're all caught up. Do you look at that? There's something that I need to tell you about Elliot. You're right. He sometimes can become a different person. Literally. Like. For real. Okay, so Elliot did wake up. Something happened. A conversation was had. And we don't get to hear it. God damn it. Watch next episode where we see the other side of this. <laughs> God, fucking Christian Slater jump scare. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, well, okay, there's stuff to say. There's st <laughs> stuff to talk about. God damn, God damn. <laughs> okay, that episode was kind of an odd one to go through because it definitely felt, it, I said it in the reaction, it felt like watching a prequel to stuff I'd already seen. So it was all stuff I already knew and I knew where it was going, but it was just like filling in all the blanks and confirming certain suspicions certain things that they kind of put up and were like this is what's happening and we're now just gonna just put some concrete over it just so you know for sure that's what happened but even though that was kind of the case and i i will admit it kind of took some of the tension out of the episode as it stood on its own because i was like i know where this is going i know what this means like it definitely felt like there were some scenes in here that could have been like things from other episodes that they just ended up using in this episode is i don't mean to sound like um down on the episode but there was there was an element of like clip show episode about this <laughs> like it had an element of like we had some extra footage we're just going to throw it into this episode and you know it might have been completely by design to do it this way and it wouldn't surprise me if that was the case but like i say just critical thinking of it it did suck some of the tension out of what was 
happening in the episode because I was like, well, I know where this all goes. I know where this all happens. I'm enjoying seeing the like the flip side to all of this, and I'm enjoying seeing the details get told to me and all that. But I don't know. I just I do wonder if there was a better way of telling this information um, where it could have still had a, a sense of tension in there. It just felt like that kind of took away from some of the impact that the episode was going for. Just a, just a little bit. After having a massive absence of um, Tyrell for a really long time, I did like that we had an episode that just completely focused on him and obviously going for a shining motif with the opening credit scroll and the whole axe thing and just his disheveledness, like all of that stuff. I, I really enjoyed, I get once again, the visualization of what the character is going through which this show excels at um but having just you know bias personal bias using one of my favorite movies as a way to visualize the the turmoil that he's going through as he's you no know, a guy who's already pretty crazy going even more crazy in his isolation and his obsession with elliot um you know just a nice touch just a nice just a nice touch and it wasn't so overbearing it became distracting it was just kind of there and i and i liked it for what it was it was you know just good he didn't kill anyone with the axe though i fully expected him to murder someone with the axe hey there's still time i guess there's still time for axe murder it might happen later on maybe it's a seed that's being planted for later down the line who knows <laughs> so specifics we got um the scene between elliot and tyrell in the arcade where it all played out where they had the gun like the bullet casing got launched because the gun jammed because of popcorn or Tyrell believes because of God because he's you know going full divine like intervention we are gods I I might be immortal fate has chosen me cult like place that he's in right now but yeah it was good to sort of just see that scene finally play out because it feels like we've been holding on to that for a really long time and we finally got to see it. We finally got to see how that went down. So I'm happy about that. And I like the scene because, you know, specifically I get to see Tyrell, Christian Slater bouncing off one another and a bit of Rami Malik in there as well. And just having all of that play out. I liked it for all of that. We got to see that Tyrell was like, yo, I believe in this so much. If you shoot me in the head, uh, I'm good. Like, I believe specifically he went on about how he will stand by Elliot no matter what. And we saw that to the nth degree here with him saying, you, you pull, pull, pull that trigger again, pull it again, and I will accept my fate. I mean, not that you'd have any choice because you'd have a hole in your head, but you get the gist. <laughs> uh, we got a little bit with the White Rose and we got a confirmation that uh, the guy who does like all the news broadcasts is kind of in his pocket. And, you know, again, thematically going along with that whole idea of media corruption where wealthy people control the media to uh, put things in place what they want. Like, they even went to the degree of how do we get Trump <laughs> in power? Um, so just not even not even like <laughs> holding back on that media control. That, that will help. <laughs> that will help steer the public consciousness in a direction that we want it to go. And I don't know, it's interesting that they're, they're not shying away from it. They're just, just going in for it. Again, I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated to know like how people react to it. Like last time people were saying it doesn't like it didn't bother them at all, even though they may not necessarily agree with everything. I do find that fascinating and an interesting discussion point. Um, like you can probably tell from my reaction on how I feel about certain things politically. I don't try to go into that too much. It's interesting. I do. I do find it interesting that the show's going that. And again, I said in reaction, but as all the Donald Trump stuff was going on and the show, I don't, I'm not sure what year the show came out on, but it's it's interesting that they decided to tackle that head on. Um, especially, you know, I feel like they wouldn't have felt like they had a choice given what the show is about. Like they can't not address it, basically. So it's interesting and they're definitely taking shots. They're taking their shots. I like it. I like it when, you know, people who, it doesn't have to be every show on the planet, but a show that is in particular about criticizing certain aspects of our society and where it may or may not have gone wrong in certain ways it feels appropriate that the show should tackle some of those subject matters and you know art is art it's not always there to be agreed with it's there to be discussed and i feel like the show is doing a good job at, at doing that then we got that whole breaking down of tyrell with the guy i can't remember the actor's name but i'm fairly sure he's the guy from princess bride right 
I'm fairly sure that's him. If not, he sounds very similar. Um, but breaking down Tyrell, if, like I say, it felt like a baseline test from Blade Runner 2049 specifically. I mean, I think that probably came out after this, but that whole, like, we're going to trip you up into saying the actual truth by just bearing down on you until you tell us what we actually want to hear and the truth. And that's where we got the whole, hey, I'll be loyal to Elliot. I won't be loyal to you, but Elliot, that's my boy. That's my boy, and I will do anything for him, clearly. Um, and that's what they needed. But yeah, just a good scene. I liked how they were sort of, they got the perfect actor to be against him in that scene because it's like so put you in this place of comfort <laughs> and just like, oh, this is, we're just having a nice friendly chat. And then bam, <laughs> tea kettle going nuts. Everything's intense and he's broken down crying and sway. Love it. <laughs> then we got the chopping wood, releasing the stress, man with the axe, you know, shining reference, you know, <laughs> gonna kill someone. Mustache man doing his manipulation, which I'll get to in a minute. We also got a little scene with Darlene and Cisco, which is mainly like the main culprit of a scene in this episode, which felt like was maybe filmed for a different episode. And then they just kind of slid it in here for a just a little bit of like context it just adds a little little flair to the whole thing but it definitely felt like it was something from another episode that they put into this episode and again it suffers from that like it would have felt foreboding that scene between mustache man and cisco um about darlene talking about her and their relationship but because we already know where it's going again it has that prequel thing of well i know the result of this i guess um so we're just you know putting a exclamation mark on it i guess i don't know maybe that's just my response to it that's just a me thing but i don't know i feel like i would have responded to that better had it been a scene leading up to cisco getting um killed i think i don't know maybe that's just me let me know what you think about that kind of stuff then <laughs> then we got the whole sequence of events tyro just going out into the world and then the cop just has a hunch that it's him somehow from like like, I don't know how far the distance was between the two guys. And he was just like, that's him. That's him. <laughs> that's Tyrell. And, and he went on it. That cop was on it. It's like, I'm finding him. I'm taking you down, man. <laughs> oh, and I felt so bad. I felt so bad for Tyrell. Because I knew what was going to happen. I just knew it. He broke his fucking thumb. <laughs> he didn't have to do it. And But then, I mean, I didn't expect it here. But we got confirmation that that FBI guy is working with the Dark Army. I kind of knew he was sus the whole time, but confirmation, I guess. Confirmation is confirmation. And this kind of explains, I guess, how the FBI have as much information as they do. And it just kind of signals to me that the Dark Army have been releasing the information that they want to release to the FBI. So they've got to give them enough to keep them like they feel like they're doing something and on the trail of the right things. Uh versus like it would be more suspicious if they didn't have anything like they're trying to do a balance thing right but i had my suspicions i've been talking about that what feels like weeks now because <laughs> dom's like yo i'm saying things that make sense and you're not responding in the right way it's pretty weird dude <laughs> it's pretty weird i did enjoy um I, I don't have they actually said his name yet i know someone mentioned his name in the comments at some point but i apologize i've, I've not picked up on it um um the mustache man doing his manipulation, enjoying Big Brother, writing his book, but I fucking knew <laughs> when he was like, this feels so weird that he's opening up his heart to Tyrell just kind of randomly out of nowhere, And but maybe he's being truthful or he's just lying and manipulating him. And then literally <laughs> a second later, yeah, I don't have kids. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's good. I like that character. He's a devious, cunning son of a gun but I, I like him there's lots of colorful characters in this episode in particular which i'm enjoying i'm just now noticing on his wall he's got like an axe and like fucking a scythe or something or like hanging up on his wall interesting and loads of cassettes and stuff interesting choices interesting choices on the set design for his apartment should we read his what he's writing hold on so chapter four a wink gone wrong Jonathan lay there prone, cheek pressed flat against the asphalt, his mouth filling with the metallic taste of pennies. As his mind rebooted, recovering from the sudden stun, he now began connecting dots, running through all the possible reasons as to why some, someone would want to assa assail him in the parking lot of a pu Publix. Publix? Publix? I don't know what that means. But there, are, there were just too many recent developments to draw a reasonable conclusion. 
Then Jonathan saw a woman with a wildly overdone, smoky eyes eyeshadow standing behind his assailant. Assailant? 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 On her, he thought. This is all a misunderstanding. And sure enough, it was. The events leading up to the present. Jonathan sucker punched in a grocery store parking lot. His reusable shopping bag on his side. The chocolate cake he had been in instructed to pick up from the bakery skittered across the pavement in its plastic shell. The Spongebob de depicted in a colourful frosting now warped in a grotesquely skewed could be traced back to a simple, harmless, miscommunicated facial gesture. A fact that Jonathan tried to articulate as he pushed himself off the ground. This is all a misund for this factual base but this factual basis for re res resolution? Resolution went unheard or unheeded as Jonathan took another blow, slumping back down to the parking lot pavement. You've been sweating, my lady, he heard the man say as he saw work boots approach. Shit, still toad. Can you just wait a second, Jonathan said, pushing himself up against. Jonathan looked up at the man. Wait, I read that completely. Pushing him up against? Again. Pushing himself up again. I can read, I promise. Jonathan looked up at the man, took in his burly, sunburned arms. His eyes unreadable, unre but intent on unmistakable. But intent unmistakable. Behind mirrored Oakley sunglasses. Then again. At the tattered steel toed boots, the story his appearance told was that of a guy who worked outside. And then he added in the meaty hands part. Interesting. Just a man getting beaten up in a in a in a in a parking lot. <laughs> That's what he's writing about, I guess. We got Leon. We got a little bit of Leon there talking about killing uh, neo Nazis, which he enjoyed, so good on Leon. Um I'm hoping Leon factors in more. Um, I enjoy Leon. He's fun. <laughs> he's, a, you know, he's. You can never can quite tell what's going on in his head, which I enjoy. I enjoy Leon a lot. And then obviously we caught back up, all the way back round to Tyrell in their new little HQ base. So excited, so excited to meet Elliot. As the smile on his face when he's like, "Hey, you get to go meet him." He just beamed, just absolutely beamed. And then he had to look nice, get his trademark iconic suit on. And then, yeah, we were all caught up. Got told that Elliot can literally become different people. So that's interesting going forward for their relationship now that he knows that and how he's going to respond to that. But yeah, all good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this episode. Uh, like I say, I have a, I, you know, it's a small nitpick about the how the, the prequel-esque nature of the episode kind of took some of the tension away. But I really enjoyed focusing on Tyrell, seeing what he was going through how they chose to say it. Lots of really cool cuts and transitions between moments. Um, but yeah, I liked I liked everything they did in terms of just exploring Tyrell as a character whilst we didn't see him and seeing what he went through up to this point. It's, it's very interesting that how many episodes happened with him off screen <laughs> and we just crunched it all together in one episode and we're there. <laughs> we're all caught up, baby. He, he didn't get a season of content. He gets an episode, but... I enjoyed it. I enjoyed getting to see the journey that he went through. Good stuff. It sets up the stage for more stuff in the next episodes. Uh, just knowing a, a bit more about where Tyrell is at in his head because he came in such a mystery like what's going on? Why is he doing this? Is is he okay? Is he just the same as when we left him or not? And clearly there is development with his character and it is important I think overall that we get to see what that development was, where he's at in his head as we go forward and what he's going to be doing with the with these new motivations and what's what's driving him especially with his obsession with Elliot where that's going to take him and if he's going to you know help hinder all of the above you know obsession <laughs> all of that stuff so yeah I liked it I liked it overall with a few just a few little nitpicks about um attention stuff but you know that's okay that's okay I would be interested to know how uh, you guys felt about that though if you Feel like there were certain elements that could have maybe been spread out in other episodes and you could have felt like I say that the more emotional beats of it uh, or if it got sucked out because of the nature of doing it this way as a flashback um I'd be interested to know I'm excited for next week hopefully we get to see Elliot and Dom meeting that's what I would like to see but frankly I'll, I'll just take whatever the show gives me give it to me all of it <laughs> give me all the show <laughs> Thank you for watching this one guys if you enjoyed it please press the thumbs up button it helps me know you liked it helps to get seen by more people also consider subscribing and uh, then you won't miss any future videos and let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments down below but for now thank you for watching i will catch you on the next one